Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. It's just about time to start, so I will just give everybody a couple more minutes to join in, and then we'll get started. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon. I am Amanda Hancock, and just to give you a little information about the program, you should see a big picture of a bus up on your screen. If you don't, um, there is a chat box down in the bottom left-hand corner. Feel free to send me a message and let me know if you're having some issues. This will also be the good way to ask any questions that you may have toward the end of the program, and if we have some time, I'll try to answer those. And I do appreciate everybody sending in their questions on the registration form, so I do have some of those ready to go. So we'll go ahead and get started. So we get asked all the time here at Becky Tours, how do I pick a tour that's right for me and my family? So we put together this little presentation to help you make a smart decision when it comes time to decide where to spend your travel budget. Again, my name is Amanda Hancock, and I'm the Sales and Marketing Coordinator for Brecky Tours and Travel. If you have questions that I don't answer for you today, or if you think of any other ones afterward, please feel free to call or email me. And I would also invite you to visit our website, as you'll find a variety of information about our tours and traveling in Scandinavia there. So for those of you that may not be familiar with Brecky Tours and Travel and what we do, our goal is pretty simple. We wish to create um, strengthen the cultural and ethnic ties between North America and Scandinavia by creating meaningful travel experiences. And Brecky Tours is a family-owned business with very close ties to Norway. We can trace our origin back to the 1950s when Arne Brecky, who was a student from Norway, worked his way through graduate school here in America by conducting summer tours to Europe. Since then, we've grown and now offer a wide range of products and services. And so our, today our dedicated and knowledgeable staff is ready to assist you with making connections to your ancestral tribes. We offer an array of enriching experiences while traveling and provide the level of customer service that clients have come to expect from us here at Becky Tours. So when it comes time to start planning your trip, one of the first considerations that you should probably consider would be to travel with a group or travel independently. While both provide different experiences, it's really a personal decision for you and your traveling companion. But probably the number one reason to join an escort or tour is that it is a worry-free vacation. You can just sit back and relax. We'll have somebody do the driving and take care of your luggage and handle all the little details. Our escort or tours include transportation, first-class hotels, most meals, and an array of activities and experiences, along with the services of a knowledgeable and professional guide who is there to enhance and enrich your travel experience by providing cultural information about the country and the sites you're visiting, as well as I said, as handling all the little details. An escorter tour is perfect for the seasoned traveler, as well as those that are traveling outside the US for the first time. You can also take advantage of group discounts if you're traveling on an escorter tour that should get more for your travel budget. You can enjoy the journey with group members that share similar interests and you can make new friends. The tour itineraries that we offer are developed based on the experience and the careful planning of, of our experience. So we, we've been in this for six years, so we should be knowledgeable about what we're doing by now. 
if you do travel, uh, choose to travel independently. It does allow you the freedom to travel at your own pace and choose the experiences that you want to include. Independent travel is suitable for those who are comfortable traveling alone and may have limited time or you wish to stay in one place and just explore the surrounding area. Public transportation is readily available in Scandinavia. However, if you need flexibility or wish to enjoy the countryside, then renting a car is an excellent option. Although an independent travel package may appear less expensive, you might want to note that costs can quickly mount when you add food, transfers, activities, car rentals, and things like that. So whenever you, whatever tour you select, you can always rest assured that you're getting a good value for your travel budget. We've had clients in the past that were a little worried that they were spending too much on a tour, but when they returned, they felt that they had received more than what they had paid for. Most of our tours do involve a bit of walking each day, but with that being said, if you do have mobility issues, please call our office and talk to one of our agents. We can help ease your concerns and if, if so, make recommendations suited for your activity level. We do allow for free time in some of the larger cities such as Oslo, Bergen, Trondheim, Stavanger, Stockholm, and Copenhagen. Our tours typically start around 8 or 9 a.m. and we try to have you at the hotel no later than 6 or 7. All of our tours include the to Bergen and Oslo, as well as a journey through the Pure Country. In addition, you'll get to see a safe church, which is one of the iconic symbols of Norway. Another activity that is included in all of our tours is a ride on the famous Flom Railway. It's ranked as one of the top 20 train rides in Europe, and we feel that it's something that everybody that comes to Norway should get to experience. We also offer luggage handling at each hotel, and our tour director will meet you at the arriving airport and stay with you until you depart the tour. You'll notice that most of your meals are included in the itinerary, and we also try to include some special meals, such as dinner at a local farm or at a unique location. And finally, for your comfort, all of our tours are in a first-class touring coach. Um, these have large windows, reclining seats, footrests, and even bathrooms on board, so you can just sit back and relax, and our wonderful bus drivers will show for you around in style. So now that you've learned what all of our tours include, how do you make the right tour decision for you? And for most of our clients, there are a few key factors that influence their decision, the first of which is travel dates and how long the tour is, and what destinations are included in the tour. Some other factors include areas of interest that are covered in the tour, the group size, and what you get to actually see and do. So if you're looking for a tour by, during a particular time period, then this page would be really helpful in narrowing down your tour options. So for May, we only have one tour departure, which is our springtime in Norway. For June, we have three departures, including Taste of Norway and Sweden, Best of Norway Tour A, and our Spectacular Norway Tour A. For July, you can see that we have a much larger selection. You have eight departures to choose from. And if your travel dates include the month of July, you may want to factor in some other criteria when you make your tour selection. And finally, for August, we only have one departure, which is our Splendor of Norway tour. So if you're wanting to visit a particular location, then I would direct you to this page. Um, for 2015, we have three multi-country tours including Taste of Norway and Sweden, and Scandinavian Adventure, both of which include visits to Norway and Sweden. And if you want to add Denmark to your list, then Captivating Scandinavia is your answer. Other areas that we often get requests for include Trondheim, Stavanger, Ålesund, and Southern Norway or Hardanger, those kind of regions down there. So, so this page kind of just breaks everything down, and so you can refer back to that at your convenience when we send you the recording. To give you some ideas of ideal tours based on your interests, I've listed a few here. And this is by no means a complete list. So if you have something that you're specifically looking for in a tour, I would recommend contacting our office and talking to one of our agents, because then we can talk to you on a one-on-one -on -one basis and direct you, you know, kind of in the right direction. For the first time traveler, we recommend Best of Norway and Spectacular Norway. And these are great introductory tours to Norway and cover a wide variety of highlights. If you're short on time, then I would recommend our Splendor of Norway tour. So this is a nine day tour and you get to experience a lot of Norway in that nine days. If you wanna see it all, then Captivating Scandinavia, uh, if you wanna experience Norway, Denmark, and Sweden, and if you want to experience as much of Norway as you want or as you can, 
then I would suggest our Norway Scenic and Historic Tour. And if you're like me and you love flowers and springtime and love being outside, then springtime in Norway would be perfect. And then another tour that features some of Norway's natural wonders is Norway's fabulous fjords. And for those that are maybe looking for something different, you've been to Norway before and you're looking to explore a new area, then I would suggest our Southern Pleasures Tour. And for those that want to combine Norway and Sweden into one tour, then we have Taste of Norway and Sweden and Scandinavian Adventure. Another consideration when finding the right tour is, of course, group size. If you want to be assured of traveling with a small group, then we have several small group tours that were designed just for you. And if you like traveling with a diverse group of people and the tour size doesn't really matter to you, then any of our other tours would work. So the last criteria that I have listed was experiences. And there's really just so many experiences on all of our tours that to me, it made more sense just to give you an idea of what each tour includes so that you can um, use that when you come try, try to make a decision. So let's head to Norway and we're going to hit springtime of Norway first. And the spring in Norway is a wonderful time to visit. The fruit blossoms are blooming, the flowers are, you know, they scent the air, and many of the waterfalls are awakening from their winter sleep. So the highlight for this tour is celebrating May 17th in Oslo. So this 10-day tour begins in Oslo, which is home to the largest children's parade for May 17th. And the Constitution of Norway was signed at Eid's Fall on May 17th in the year 1814. They celebrated their 200th anniversary just last year. All over Norway, children's parades with an abundance of flags form the central elements of the celebration. Each elementary school district arranges its own parade with marching bands between the schools. The parade takes the children through the community, often making stop at homes of senior citizens, war memorials, and etc. The longest parade, of course, is in Oslo, where some 100,000 people travel to the city center to participate in the main activities. The this is broadcast actually on TV every year, and there's comments on costumes and banners, and together with local reports from celebrations around the country. The massive Oslo parade includes about 100 schools, there's marching bands, um, and it passes the royal palace where the royal family greets the people from the main balcony. From Oslo, you'll travel through the beautiful Hollandal Valley to the famous ski resort of Yilo. Here you'll board the Oslo Bergen Railway, crossing the Hardanger Plateau to Flum. After a night in Flum, you'll drive to Stegestein for a view, uh, fabulous view over the Ireland Fjord. You'll continue to Ballastrum by ferry across the Somme Fjord. After a night at the Kvignes Hotel in Ballastrand, you'll visit the Hopperstad State Church. And this church was, is assumed to have been built around the year 1130, and it still stands in its original location. On the way to Loftus, you'll drive across the new Hardanger Bridge. It's one of the longest spans in the world and is 328 feet longer than the Golden Gate Bridge. It's also the longest tunnel-to-tunnel -tunnel suspension bridge in the world. So there's tunnels on either end of that bridge, which, you know, it makes it really hard to see. The next morning, you'll uh, go to Steindal Falsen, and this is a waterfall that's one of the most visited tourist attractions in Norway. From the parking lot, there's a path that goes up along the waterfall, up a hill, and then actually behind the waterfall where you can actually walk into the water. The waterfall is 151 feet high and has the greatest volume when the snow melts in May and in June. So May is the perfect time to go and experience this waterfall. The tour comes to an end in Bergen after two nights there. So in conclusion, springtime in Norway starts on May 14th and runs through May 23rd. You'll visit Oslo, Jarlo, Flam, Balestrand, Vit, Vos, Loftus, and Bergen. The main attraction here is celebrating May 17th in Oslo. You'll also get to experience Norwegian history and culture, um, explore the Hardanger region, and enjoy just Norway's beauty during the spring. So it doesn't get much better than that. This is a new tour for 2015, though, so we're not exactly sure what the group size is going to be yet, but we're expecting maybe 20 to 25 people. Some of the unique experiences for this tour, of course, uh, the celebration of May 17th in Oslo. You'll also get to visit Eidsvoll, which is where the Norwegian Constitution was signed back in 1814. We'll have a photo stop at Stegestein Viewpoint, which overlooks the Ireland Fjord. 
which is an arm of the Sonicard, you'll tour the Hopperstaff State Church. The group will have a chance to walk behind a waterfall, and you'll have a full day in Bergen to explore on your own. So for me, that's that's key right there because I never get enough time in Bergen. So it's a great um, great to spend a full day in Bergen just doing whatever you want to do. And of course, you'll have the opportunity to enjoy all the flowers and the fruit, fruit blossoms dotting the countryside. So our next tour is Best of Norway, and we have two departures for this tour, and it's a perfect tour for the first time visitors, especially if you're wanting to include a visit to Stavanger. So Best of Norway is an 11 day tour. It starts in Oslo and then travels north to Lillehammer. Before reaching Lillehammer, you'll stop at a farm and enjoy a tour along with dinner served by your gracious hostess. And if you're lucky, you may even get a little impromptu dinner service. I know the last time I was there, Shar Brecky actually sat down at the piano and her and our tour guide um, gave us a little dinner performance. So that was a lot of fun. From Lillehammer, you'll travel to the Grubenstall and Oda Valleys to Lom. And there'll be time in Lom for you to visit the Stone Center there, um, which has a stone museum. Or you can visit the local bakery for a yummy snack. The Loam Stave Church is also in the town center and is within easy walking distance. After the stop, you'll continue across the Grotli Mountains to the Fjord Country, and weather permitting, drive to the Dolph Nebel Observation Point for a spectacular view of the Geiranger Fjord. Now, I have to warn you, we do have on here weather permitting because the last time I was there, it was so foggy, you couldn't see anything, barely the hand in front of your face. So, but it was still a lot of fun just to travel the road. So. Um, the Geiranger Fjord is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and it has been since 2005. You'll continue on to Lowen for dinner and overnight at the luxurious Alexandra Hotel. And don't forget your bathing suit because the Alexandra Hotel has a really nice indoor pool. The next morning you'll take a troll cart up to the Brixton Glacier and you're probably going, what is a troll cart? Well, don't worry, we have a picture later and I'll, I'll point that out to you. So you'll continue on to Odd Hill Beacon Weaving Workshop, which is a great place to pick up souvenirs for everyone back home. If you're not into shopping, they have a nice little cafeteria where you can grab a snack. So tonight you'll enjoy dinner and overnight at Fleischer's Hotel in Voss, which was occupied by the Germans during World War II. And the hotel was actually one of the few buildings in Voss that was not destroyed by bombs. The hotel was treated very well by the Germans and even the valuable family silver was in good condition after the war. Helped, um, it helped by them hiding it under the dining room floor. The next day is the Norway in a nutshell. So you'll take a train ride to Flum, you'll cruise on the Ireland and Narrow Fjords, and then you'll ride the thrilling Stahlheim Road back to Voss. From Voss, the group will continue to Bergen for a city tour before you head south to Stavanger. And on the way to Stavanger, you'll visit the Nord Vegan History Center in Odbalsnes, which is home to the first kings of Norway and the legendary figures who often appear in sagas and songs. So you get to learn more about the Vikings and their early history here. And it's really just a really neat place. They have a whole reconstructed Viking village and everything. You'll spend two nights in Stavanger before you return home to the US. So Best of Norway, just to sum up, it has two departures, one in June and one in July. Visits include Oslo, Lillehammer, Geiranger Fjord, Lowen, Vols, Flam, Bergen, and Stavanger. If you're interested in Norwegian culture and history or Vikings, Olympics, um, geology, glaciers, then this is a tour that you may want to check out. And this is one of our most popular tours, thus we average about 35 to 40 people for each departure. So some of the tour experiences that you can expect on this tour include um, visiting the Folk Museum in Oslo, You'll have a farm dinner and a tour. You'll visit the Hodeland Glassworks. You'll view the 1994 Olympic sites in Lillehammer. And if you're lucky, you can take the ski lift up to the, uh, the top of the ski jump. You'll tour the Stone Museum in Loam, or if that's not your thing, you can, there's a little shop that they have there, or you can uh, check out the church. You'll get the full Norway nutshell experience, uh, along with a guided walk through Bergen's Hanseatic Wharf. You'll visit the Nord Vegan History Center in um, Valsnes to learn about the first Viking kings. And finally, you'll get to explore Stavanger both with the guide and on your own. Another great introductory tour to Norway is our Spectacular Norway Tour. It's similar to Best, but instead of heading south to Stavanger, you actually travel north up to Trondheim. 
So after spending two nights in Oslo, you'll head north through the Hollandal and Ireland Valleys to Flom. After riding the Flom Railway, which National Geographic Traveler magazine named as uh, one of the top 10 train rides in Europe, you'll arrive in Fulks for dinner and overnight at Fleischer's Hotel. The next day includes a visit to Bergen, and then your group will head north over the Vik Mountains and across the Solne Fjord to the Brixell Glacier. Your day will end that night at Lowen at the Lowen Fjord Hotel. <clears throat> the next day, you'll want to make sure that you have your camera ready, so you'll cruise the Geiringer Fjord past the Seven Sisters Waterfall, uh, abundance of wildlife, and quaint little villages. Then you'll drive the Eagle Road and the Trolls Path, famous for its steep and narrow hairpin bends, which you can see in that bottom uh, right-hand picture. Your night is actually spent in the Rika Silet Hotel in Volda, which is a rather unique hotel since it's shaped like a ship's sail, and it's right on the water. En route to Trondheim, you'll drive the Atlantic Ocean Road and stop in Bud for a visit to the Ergen Kisport, which is a bunker built by the Germans during World War II. You'll have lunch at a local restaurant, and if you go by the comments from tour participants last year, it'll be the best seafood that you've ever had. The tour concludes in Trondheim, which was the Viking capital of Norway until 1217. One of the most spectacular attractions in Trondheim is the Nidros Cathedral. The cathedral built in 1070 is the most important Gothic monument in Norway, and was North, Northern Europe's most important Christian pilgrimage site during the Middle Ages. Nidros Cathedral is built over the burial site of St. Olaf, the Norwegian Viking king who became the patron saint of Norway. While he did try to brutally Christianize and unify the Norwegian population, he made quite a few powerful enemies. And as a result, <clears throat> Olaf was killed in the Battle of Stiklestad, which is one of the most well-known battles in Norwegian history. His body was brought to Trondheim and he was buried on the shore of the River Mead. One year later, miraculous and inexplicable things happened to the king's grave, and Olaf was declared a saint. Olaf's remains were later moved to a secret location in the cathedral, and even to this day, his last resting place remains a mystery. Today, it is the northernmost medieval cathedral in the world and the second largest in Scandinavia. So Spectacular Norway has two departures, one in late June and one in late July. Destinations include Oslo, Flam, Vos, Bergen, Geirungerfjord, Lowen, Molde, and Trondheim. This is a great general interest tour, and if you have a chance to learn, you also get to drive through the Hollandale Valley, see a glacier up close, visit a World War II bunker, and learn more about St. Olaf. This, along with Best, is another popular tour, often with 35 to 40 people for each departure. <laughs> so quite a bit of Norway is included on this 10-day tour. Starting in Oslo, you'll visit the Folk Museum, which is Norway's largest museum of cultural history, featuring the world's oldest, oldest open-air museum and large indoor collection. You'll ride the Flam Railway through fantastic nature, past the Rala Road, steep mountains, breathtaking waterfalls, and through 20 tunnels. And famous for its charming Hanseatic Wharf, Bergen can trace its history back to 1070 AD. Bergen has become a symbol of Norwegian cultural heritage and has gained a place on UNESCO World Heritage List. The old Hanseatic Wharf is architecturally unique and is perhaps one of the most familiar images in all of Norway. Bergen is also home to the famous composer Edvard Grieg. Sites that you'll get to experience up close include Brixell Glacier, where you can even sample some of the water, and there's those little troll carts that I had mentioned earlier. They're basically little souped up gears. And at the Geirunger Fjord, don't be afraid to pop out on the deck of your ferry to savor the fresh air and perhaps the spray of the waterfalls. And you can marvel at how your bus driver gets a large bus through the golden route and up the troll's path. And you can walk in the steps of the Germans at Ergen Kistford. You'll also get to see the fantastic sculptures and hear the stories behind the Nidros Cathedral in Trondheim. And my little comment for that is just be sure to visit the gift shop if you want a picture of the inside because no pictures or videos are allowed. So be sure and include that little stop. So one of our three new itineraries for 2015 is Norway's Fabulous Fjords. This tour was designed specifically for those that want to experience as many of Norway's legendary fjords as possible 
and a short amount of time. This is an 11 day tour and includes visits to six fjords and includes four nights in fjord view rooms at the Umlesbom Hotel and the Solstrand Hotel, both of which are charming and historic properties. So after two nights in Oslo, you'll head north to Lillehammer. En route, you'll stop at Hoddle and Glassworks, the oldest industrial company in Norway that can claim continuous operation since its foundation back in 1762. In the Glassblowers Workshop, you can see glassblowers practice their craft and there are exciting exhibitions in the art gallery. You can learn about the history of glassblowing in the Glass Museum, enjoy a refreshing snack in the cafeteria, or you can buy glass products to bring home. From the glassworks, you'll continue north to a local farm for a tour and a traditional Norwegian big dog or lunch. Upon arriving in Lillehammer, you'll visit the site of the 1994 Olympics before retiring to your hotel. The next morning, you'll drive through the Gruppenstall and Oda Valley to Lom. Here you can visit the Stone Center or the Safe Church before continuing to Dalsneva Observation Point for a view of the Geirunger Fjord. Surrounded by snow-covered mountain peaks, waterfalls, and forests, Garunker Fjord is truly a Norwegian icon. Day six will take you to the Brixdal Glacier and across the Sogne Fjord to Ireland, where we'll stop at Stegestein for a photo stop overlooking the Ireland Fjord. You'll continue to plum for dinner and overnight at the historic Fretheim Hotel. After enjoying Norway in a nutshell excursion, you'll drive south to Loftus, which is in the heart of the Norway's apple, cherry, and pear orchards. The next two nights are spent at the Ullensbong Hotel right on the Sword Fjord. And let me go back just a second here. The bottom middle picture is a picture of the Ullensbong Hotel. As you can see, it's right on the water. Let me flip forward. And the next two days, uh, you will have a variety of activities, including a visit to Kiosen, a mountain farm, which you see on the lower left-hand picture. A tour of the Hardanger Fjord Nature Center, which is in the lower right hand corner, and a visit to a fruit farm, which has been in, in operation by the same family for eight generations. It's also home to the best apple cake. I have sampled this cake, it is delicious. You will also visit the Hardanger Akva Center to learn about farm fishing, which, if you're not really into fish farming, it's, it's still interesting. I, I am not a fish person by any means, but just the, the fact of learning how they do it and the, the whole process is very interesting. Your last two nights in Norway are spent at the lovely Solstrand Hotel in rooms overlooking the Bjornafjord. And you can see the Solstrand up in the top left-hand corner, the little yellow um, Swiss style. So in brief, this 11-day tour operates between June 27th and July 7th. You'll visit Oslo, Lillehammer, you'll get to see the Geirunger Fjord, Loen, Lom, Lotus, Bergen, and Os. If seeing Norway's most famous fjords is on your list, then this tour is ideal for you. And this is, again, a new tour for 2015, so we're not sure how many people will have on the tour just yet. So some of the unique experiences for this tour include a visit to the Kiosen Farm. You'll drive across the new Hardanger Bridge. You'll get to visit the Senso Fruit Farm. You'll also get to visit a fish farm. And you'll get to spend four nights in Fjord View rooms. Also, if you enjoy hiking or just kind of walking through the nature, this tour does allow some time to explore the Norwegian countryside and Loftus and Os. So if you picture Norway as the white little wooden houses that are situated along the coast, then Norway's Southern Pleasures will be like a dream country because that's that's a lot of what this is. <laughs> You're driving along the coast seeing all these beautiful houses. So you'll travel with a small group through southern Norway and stay at some really charming hotels along the way. Beginning in Oslo, you'll head through the Telemark region, which is an area rich in cultural traditions. You'll stop for a tour of the Hadal State Church, which is Norway's largest state church. It's not only as a medieval architectural masterpiece, but also a living church for today's congregation in Notodden and Telemark. On the wall of the exterior passage, you can see runes inscribed, telling that the church was dedicated to the Holy Virgin Mary. Next, you'll visit the Industrial Museum in Rukon. So here, the heavy water at Vimwork was an important part of the Nazis' nuclear project during the Second World War. Four military operations were launched against the production. Here, you'll learn more about the military operations and how the heavy water production was sabotaged by resistance fighters. In Telemark, you'll also visit a silversmith, 
before driving on the North Sea Scenic Highway between Southern and Western Norway. And one of the highlights of this tour is actually dinner and a formal tea theory. Something a little different. In Stavanger, you'll find a charming mix of old and new. In the old part of town, there are more than 170 white painted wooden houses from the end of the 18th and 19th century. You can also visit the Stavanger Cathedral, which is built of stone in the 12th and 13th centuries and is one of the few churches in Scandinavia that has kept its original design. After visiting Stavanger, you'll head through the Hardanger region to visit a local rose mowing artist. You'll spend two nights at the Olensvang Hotel on Loftus before visiting Kiosen Mountain Farm, which actually is perched like an eagle's nest on the mountain ledge, so it's almost 2,000 feet above the fjord. You'll visit the Hardanger uh, Nature Center, and a, you'll stop for a chance to purchase some Norwegian pewter. From Loftus, you'll experience the Norway in a nutshell, and you'll get to sightsee in Bergen. And your final two nights are spent at the Solstrand Hotel in Os, overlooking the Bjarne Fjord. So, Southern Pleasures in summary. This is a small group tour. It departs the U.S. on July 6th and returns on July 16th. During the 11 days, you'll visit Oslo, Vraldal, Grimstad, Kristensund, Savanger, Loktus, Flam, Bergen, and Os. And I would recommend this tour for people interested in the Telemark and Hardanger regions um, who want more of a leisurely paced tour with, um, you know, if you want to stay at Charming Hotel or if you just want that coastal region experience. And this is also a great tour for those that may have been to Norway before and are looking to visit some different areas. As a small group tour, this is limited to 28 people. So you'll enjoy wonderful scenery in picturesque southern Norway, in addition to visiting the Hadal State Church and the Industrial Museum in Rukon. You'll get to learn from a silversmith and rose mulling artist about their livelihood and their creation. You'll savor a traditional dinner and a former cheese dairy and visit a mountain farm. So just some really neat um, experiences for this tour. Norwegian Adventure is another new tour for 2015, and on this tour you'll get to experience Norway's culture, stunning architecture, and natural wonders. This tour travels actually round trip from Oslo and includes a tour of the Oslo Opera House while you're there. After two nights in Oslo, you'll drive through the Hollandal Valley to Flom. In Flom, you'll board the railway and travel up the valley to Voss, and the next day you'll enjoy an excursion to Bergen. Day six will find you driving over the Vik Mountains, ferrying across the Songne Fjord, and riding the troll carts up to the Brixdal Glacier. And the trip to Allison is a unique part of this tour, but before you arrive, you'll stop at the Norwegian Fjord Horse Center. And this is the national center for the native Norwegian Fjord horse breed. The center provides information and advice on all aspects related to the Fjord horse, and it's also dedicated to the development and new areas of usage, breaking and education, as well as to further the breeding of the pure horse. Now, the city of Alasun is known for its architectural um, nouveau style, its surrounding fjords and its high peaks of the Sonomore Alps. In January of 1904, the town was the scene of the Alasun fire, which was one of the most terrible fires in Norwegian history. Practically the entire town was destroyed during the night, and more than 10,000 people were left without shelter. So after a period of planning, the town was rebuilt in stone, brick, and mortar in the Art Nouveau style, which was the architectural style at the time. The structure was designed by approximately 20 master builders and 30 Norwegian architects. The town has an unusually consistent architecture, most of the buildings having been built between 1904 and 1907. Following Alasun, you'll cruise the Geiriger Fjord and drive to the Dalsnib Observation Point, Continue your drive south for an overnight at the Elva Sutter Hotel, which is located in the Jontenheimen National Park. And you can see a little picture of that hotel in the upper left-hand corner. En route back to Oslo, you'll stop for a visit to a stave church in the Gubernstal Valley, lunch at a low farm, and a tour of Myhaugen, an open-air museum with 200 old and new buildings, exhibitions, and more. You'll also stop in Hamar for a walk through the Glass Cathedral, which protects the magnificent ruins of the cathedral inside. A fabulous protective structure of glass and steel, it not only provides a great shelter to preserve the ruin, but it's also a modern acoustic hall, which is fit for concerts and religion purposes. The farewell dinner is held that night at a local farm, and you'll spend your last night at Hotel Olofsgaard, 
which you see in the bottom right hand picture. Another unique little property. So this fun filled 11 day tour departs the US on July 11th and returns on July 21. Throughout the tour, you'll visit Oslo, Flam, Vos, Bergen, Loen, Alasun, Geiranger, Boverdalen, Lillehammer, and Hamar. Areas of interest for this tour include, of course, Norway's unique architecture, especially in Alasun, Norway's natural wonders, the Fjord horse, farming, and Nor Norway's history and culture. So again, this is a new tour for 2015, so we're looking forward to uh, sharing that with everybody. So the Norwegian adventure experiences. One of the many highlights of this tour is, of course, a visit to Alasund for a chance to see the town's unique architecture. You'll also visit the Norwegian Fjord Horse Center to learn more about Norway's native horse breed. And you'll get to spend a night overlooking the Jotunheimen National Park, which is something I don't think you'll soon forget. So the song both Baldur's Heritage Tour, we recommend that tour for people with ancestral roots uh, specific to these areas. It provides an in-depth look into various areas within these regions and allows time for family heritage site um, visits. You'll also get to travel with our genealogist, Jean Marthaler, who can provide assistance in locating your family's ancestors, heritage sites, and more. Typically, this tour is a small group tour, which is focused on finding their families, farms, churches, and other sites um, related to their ancestors. Quite a lot of personal service goes into this tour, and we encourage anybody that is thinking of joining this tour to please contact us and speak with one of our staff members. There are a number of church and museum visits included in this tour. Church visits include the Vols, Underdahl, Flom, Hopperstadt, Ernest, and Borgum churches. Folk museum visits are also um, include Vols and the Baldur's Folk Museum, as well as the Otterness Farm. So I'm not going to go into too much detail on this tour, as it really is a pretty specialized tour. But if you would like more information, please give us a call and speak with one of us. Um, we can get you in contact with Jean or even Arnie Brecky, who often likes to attend this tour. This is a 13-day tour. It focuses on the areas of Vos, Flam, Vik, Leikanger, Songdal, Luster, Sholden, and Fogerness. So it's Again, ideal for those with ancestral roots in these areas. And it is a small group tour, so we do try to limit it to uh, 28 people or so. Along with the chance to walk with your walk in your ancestors' footsteps, this tour allows you to travel with a genealogist and visit a variety of churches and folk museums in Norway. It's a really great chance to get into touch with your Norwegian roots. So uh, moving on to scenic and historic, this is probably our most comprehensive tour of Norway. It's also become one of our most popular tours in the past couple of years, thanks to a little movie known as Frozen. The reason for the increase in the popularity is a visit to Rodos, which was actually the inspiration behind the movie setting. But we'll talk a little bit more about Rodos in just a little bit. First, this tour stops off in Bergen before you head up to uh, Bols and Flom. From Flom, you'll drive through the world's second longest tunnel and then ferry across the Sonne Fjord. No, which is Norway's longest yard. The design of the tunnel takes into consideration the mental strain on drivers. This tunnel takes 20 minutes to drive through. So the tunnel is divided into four sections, separated by three large mountain caves at 3.7 mile intervals. While the main tunnel has white lights, the caves actually have the blue lighting with yellow lights at the fringes to give the impression of the sunrise. And you can actually see a picture up in the top left hand corner. The caves are meant to break up the routine and provide a refreshing view, and it also allows drivers to take a little rest. The caverns are also used as turnaround points and breaks um, for those that may feel a little bit claustrophobic during their 20-minute drive to the tunnel. So between Loen and Trondheim, you'll cruise the Geiranger Fjord, you'll drive the Trolls Path, and overnight in Molda. The next day, you'll drive the Atlantic Ocean Road, which during construction was hit by 12 European windstorms, which is crazy. The road was opened in uh, July 1989 and is now a cultural heritage site and is classified as a national tourist route. It's a popular site to film automotive commercials and has been declared as the world's best road trip. It's also been awarded the title as uh, Norwegian Construction of the Century. So when you when you see it for yourself, you'll you'll understand why. But 
In Trondheim, you'll be treated to one of the best breakfasts in Norway before you set off on a sightseeing tour of the city and the Nidaros Cathedral. The afternoon is actually free in Trondheim, um, and you can choose to explore the city or you can attend the St. Olaf Festival, which, which will actually be going on while we're there. The next day, you'll depart for Stiklestad, and again, the Battle of Stiklestad in 1030 is one of the most famous battles in the history of Norway. In this battle, King Olaf II of Norway was killed, and a year after his battle, his grave and coffin were open, and according to legend, Olaf's hair and nails had grown since he was buried. The coffin was then moved to St. Clement's Church in Trondheim, and Olaf came to be venerated as a saint and was given the name of St. Olaf. Stiklestad's church was erected on top of the stone against which he died, and the stone is still supposedly inside the altar of the church. So you can see the uh, picture of the church in the bottom left-hand corner. There's also some really fascinating paintings on the inside that are just, they're just really unbelievable. On day nine, we'll uh, visit the copper mining town of Rodos. It is one of the two towns in Norway that were historically designated as mining towns, along with the silver town of Kongsberg. And this is a, uh, the modern day inhabitants of rural still work and live in the characteristic 17th and 18th century buildings, which have been led to its designation as the UNESCO World Heritage Site. Rodos has about 80 wooden houses, most of which um, are standing around courtyards. Many retain their dark pitch log facades, giving the town a medieval appearance. And you can see uh, a picture of the town up in the top right hand corner. And you can see that's kind of the reason that it was um, used as inspiration for the movie Frozen. The, it's very um, classic in its appearance. For, from Rodos, we'll travel south to Lillehammer before the tour ends on day 13 in Oslo. So this is one of our longer tours at 13 days, but includes a number of destinations such as Bergen, Vos, Flom, Loen, Geiringer, Molde, Trondheim, Stiklestad, Selbu, Rodos, Lillehammer, and Oslo. So if you're interested in learning more about Norway's Viking history, mining, World War II, its um, religious history, or farming, then this tour might fit the bill. You can also expect about 30 people on average for this tour. And this is a great educational tour, but you'll also get to experience a variety of Norway scenery. And visiting Rodos and attending the St. Olaf Festival in Trondheim truly makes this tour unique. So our last tour of the season for Norway is Splendor of Norway. It's our shortest tour at nine days and is ideal for those wanting to get a sample of Norway, perhaps before ex exploring heritage sites independently or combining their tour with a cruise or extension to Sweden or Denmark. Starting in Bergen, you'll travel to Vols, where you'll board the, uh, the railway to Flam. After arriving in Flam, you'll cruise the Sonne Fjord to Balasrun for an overnight at the Kvikness Hotel. Dinner at the hotel is quite a treat, so be ready to enjoy a great meal. They also have a lot of interesting um, furniture inside. In the uh, bottom right hand corner, you can see there's some wooden carved furniture, and that's kind of scattered all throughout the, the hotel, so be sure and check that out. The next day, you'll ferry back across the fjord to Vik for a visit to the Hopperstaff State Church, which you might recognize if you've ever been to Moorhead, Minnesota. There's actually a replica there. Then it's on to the Hardanger Nature Center and a visit to the uh, Kiosen Mountain Farm. And tonight is spent at the Ullensong Hotel. And while you're at the hotel, be sure to search for the life-size wooden statue of Edward Grieg and his entourage, which is next to the timber hut where Grieg frequently visited and worked. He's also very short. I, he was a lot shorter than I expected. On day six, we'll drive through the Telemark region and visit the Industrial Museum in Rukon. Here you are in for a special treat as you enjoy dinner and entertainment at the Strand Hotel in Braudal. So usually we have a violin player come in or a dance, um, you know, dance group. So something, something a little special each year. A true highlight of this tour is, of course, a cruise on the Telemark Canal, one of the most beautiful waterways in the world. The Telemark Canal was carved into the rock over 100 years ago, and when the canal was completed in 1892, it was called the Eighth Wonder. The canal connects the coast of Telemark with the interior through eight locks at a distance of 60 mi 65 miles from Sheen to Dalin. 
Your tour ends in Oslo after a sightseeing tour featuring Vigeland Sculpture Park, which is the world's largest sculpture park made by a single artist, as well as the Viking Ship Museum, which is home to the world's best preserved Viking ship. You also get to see ship burials of the Viking Age and unique Viking woodcraft. So this tour is our last escorted tour of the season and departs on August 6th and returns to the U.S. on day 9, which is August 14th. Traveling from west to east, you'll visit Bergen, Vos, Flam, Balestram, Loftus, Gradal, and Oslo. And areas of interest include the Telemark and Hardanger region, the Telemark Canal, visiting Balestram, uh, World War II, and perhaps if you're interested in folk music or dancing, this might be of an interest. And typically this tour has about 25 people. So we do allow some free time in Bergen and also during the tour. And you'll also get to spend the night at the Kvignes Hotel on Ballestrand at the, and at the Ullensvang Hotel on Voltus. Now I put a little note on there to try the stinky cheese at dinner at the Kvignes Hotel if you're a brave soul. So um, something to um, check out. You'll also get to tour the Hopperstad Stave Church as well as the Hardanger Nature Center. And, of course, one of the most unique experiences on this tour is cruising a portion of the Telemark Canal. So now we're going to turn our focus to our three Scandinavian tours that are being offered for 2015, starting with Taste of Norway and Sweden. And this is a small group tour which offers a little sample of Norway and Sweden. So going from west to east, you'll begin in Bergen, where you'll spend two nights before experiencing the Norway in the nutshell adventure and route to Oslo. From Oslo, you explore the Varmland province of Sweden and with its many writers and artists and poets. And Dalarna will stop for a tour at the Dala Horse Center. And a Dala Horse, of course, is a traditional carved painted wooden horse that originated in the province of Dalarna. In the old days, the Dala Horse was mostly used as a toy for children, but today it's become a symbol of Dalarna as well as all of Sweden. Several different types of doll horses are made with distinguishing features depending on where they are created. One particular style, how, however, has become much more common, and that is the, the red, slightly carved um, horse with details and a harness in white, green, yellow, and blue. And people just seem to really get inspired to do great things in Dalarna. Take Anders Zorn, one of the Sweden's great painters and whose work hang in galleries and museums across the world. Another artist inspired by this province is Carl Larsson, one of Sweden's most beloved artists. He and his wife Karen moved to, the picturesque, moved to a picturesque house in Sunborn, and this house really became Carl and Karen's mutual art project and is now a paradise for art lovers and anyone that in, has an interest in design and gardening. I will actually get to visit the Carl Larsson house en route to Uppsala for a tour of the cathedral. So the cathedral dates back to the late 13th century, and at a height of 389 feet is the tallest church building in the Nordic countries in Scandinavia. It was originally built under Roman Catholicism and was used for coronation of Swedish monarchs for a lengthy period of time following the Protestant Reformation. Several of its chapels were converted to a house to um, were converted to house the tombs of Swedish monarchs as well as archbishops. So from Uppsala, you'll continue to Stockholm for the next two nights. And actually the name Stockholm is first heard in the Chronicle of Eric, probably written between 1322 and 1332. According to this chronicle, Stockholm was founded by Boger in 1252. It was named Stockholm as referring to the town in between the bridges. Stockholm is built on 14 islands and is connected by 57 bridges. So we'll have a sightseeing tour in Stockholm, and in part of that tour, you'll get to visit the Vasa Museum. And the battleship Vasa was commissioned in 1625, but on August 10, 1628, it weighed anchor in Stockholm, and its maiden voyage pretty much just ended in disaster. It sank after only 20 minutes, and after a lengthy search, the ship was rediscovered in 1956, and it was salvaged in 1961. Today you can see the ship, which is by far the best preserved example of ship construction and naval warfare of that area, era, and it's at the Vasa Ship Museum. So this 10-day tour begins on June 4th and ends in Stockholm on June 13th. In Norway, you'll visit Bergen, Flom, and Oslo. 
and in Sweden you'll see Talberg, Sundborn, Uppsala, and Stockholm. For those interested in visiting both Sweden and Norway, this is a great tour option. And with the group size limited to 28 people, it is a small group tour. So this is a great uh, short tour of Norway and Sweden. You'll get to visit the Borgund State Church in Norway and followed by a photo stop at Stegastein overlooking the Ireland Fjord. You'll get to visit the Dalla Horse Center and the home of Carl Larsen. And before you get to Stockholm, you'll get to walk through the Uppsala Cathedral. So it's a nice little tour of both countries. Scandinavian Adventure is another tour that actually visits Norway and Sweden, and it's pretty similar to Taste of Norway and Sweden, but you do get a little additional time in Norway. So therefore, you get to add Lowen, Geiringer, and Lillehammer to your trip. So as you can see from the map, it is pretty similar to uh, Taste of Norway and Sweden. After you visit Flom, you'll ferry across the Sogne Fjord for a night at the Kvignes Hotel in Ballastrand. And from there, you'll continue north to Lowen, Stepping, uh, stopping at the Bristol Glacier and at Old Hill Beacons Weaving Workshop. The next day, you'll cruise the Geiringer Fjord and stop in Lom before arriving in Lillehammer. And on your way to Oslo the next day, you'll get to um, tour Myhagen and have dinner at a local farm. So crossing into Sweden, you'll still visit Talberg, the Dalla Horse Center, Carl Larson's house, and Uppsala Cathedral. So that part is very similar to um, Taste of Norway in Sweden. So in summary, they are very similar tours, but if you want a little bit more time in Norway, I would recommend this tour instead. You'll visit Lowen, Geiringer, and Lillehammer, in addition to Bergen, Flom, and Oslo. And this is a new tour for 2015, and people are still signing up, so we are not sure exactly how many people we're going to have on this tour. Some additional experience you'll get to have on this tour include a ferry from Flom to Balasran, an excursion to Brixel Glacier, a cruise on the Geiringer Fjord, a visit to Lom, and a tour of Myhagen. You also get to have a lovely dinner at a farmhouse before leaving Norway. And our final tour is Captivating Scandinavia. With visits to Norway, Denmark, and Sweden, it encompasses the most countries out of all of our Scandinavian tours. In Norway, you'll visit Bergen, Flom, and Oslo with almost a full day to explore on your own while you're in Oslo. From Oslo, you'll take an overnight cruise to Copenhagen, You'll enjoy dinner and entertainment on board before you retire to your outside cabin. You'll arrive in Copenhagen the next morning and disembark. On your sightseeing tour of Copenhagen, you will learn that Copenhagen has a colorful history dating back more than 6,000 years. The first written record regarding Copenhagen dates back to 1043. The reigning monarch, uh, Queen Marguerite II, can actually trace her ancestry back to the Viking Age, and that makes Denmark the world's oldest kingdom. Among cobble squares, narrow streets, and old buildings, the history really comes alive to us even today. And if you love castles, Denmark has almost as many fairy tale castles as it does fairy tales. So, en route to Sweden, we'll actually visit Fredericksborg Castle in Hillerod, Denmark. It was built as a royal residence for King Christian IV and is now a museum of national history. The current edifice replaced the previous castle erected by Frederick II and it's the largest Renaissance palace in Scandinavia. The palace is located on three small islands in the middle of Palace Lake and is adjoined by a large formal garden in the Baroque style. You can actually see a picture of that in the bottom left-hand corner. So next we'll head over to Sweden and your first night in Sweden will actually be at the lovely Tolftaholm Manor, seen in the upper left-hand picture. The next morning we'll head to Costa Boda in the Kingdom of Crystal. The Kingdom of Crystal is actually a region of Sweden that contains 15 glassworks dating back to the 18th century. The glassworks have become a part of the culture in Sweden and examples can be found in many Swedish homes. So um, when touring the forest of province of Småland in Sweden, it is normal to make uh, at least one stop at the glassworks. So that's why we wanted to include a stop at Costa Boda. Here you'll also get to enjoy a hits of lunch with traditional food and music. The next two nights are actually your, um, we'll be traveling to Gothenburg, and Gothenburg was founded by a royal charter in 1621. The port of Gothenburg is actually the largest port in the Nordic countries. Though often caught in Stockholm shadow, Gothenburg actually has a greater appeal for many visitors um, than the fast-paced capital. Some of the country's finest talent hails from the streets of this cosmopolitan port, 
including music icons Jose Gonzalez and the soundtrack of our lives. So you'll have a day to enjoy in Gothenburg on your own, and then in the evening we'll have a dinner cruise in the archipelago. You'll continue on the next day to Stockholm where the tour will end after a two night stay. So this is another 13 day tour, captivating begins on July 16th and runs to the 28th. But what's really nice about this tour is if you'd like, you can actually just join us for a portion. You can choose to experience just Norway and Copenhagen or join the tour in Copenhagen and travel with the group to Stockholm. So with a variety of sites and interests, this tour is suitable for a wide range of people. And we expect about 25 people on this tour average. This is a great tour if you want to experience all three countries at once. Um, extra experiences include dinner at the Tivoli Gardens, a tour of Fredericksborg Castle, a night in a Swedish manor house, and a visit to Costa Boda for a Hitzel lunch. You'll also have some free time in Gothenburg to pick and choose whatever you wish to see in this lively town. And you'll have a dinner cruise before traveling on to Stockholm, where we'll enjoy a tour of the city and a visit to the Vasa Ship Museum. So now that you've heard all about our tours, if you're not ready to go home just yet, we can extend your trip overseas with an extension to a variety of places within Scandinavia. So for our tours that end in Stockholm, it's an easy overnight cruise to the Finnish capital of Helsinki, where you can enjoy a sightseeing tour uh, featuring the city highlights and two nights before you continue on home, or you can travel to St. Petersburg. If you're interested in discovering the land of fire and ice, then you can request a stopover in Iceland either to or from Scandinavia. Here you can experience the Blue Lagoon, Reykjavik, and the Golden Circle all on a short three-day stopover. And like I said, if Russia is on your bucket list, then you can sign up from a visa for a visa-free cruise that departs from Helsinki or Stockholm. You can spend two nights in the heart of St. Petersburg, visiting Pushkin, Catherine's Palace, the British, and much more. And the nice thing about these packages is that you don't have to have a visa in order to visit St. Petersburg, which is a nice little option. You can also explore the coast of Norway on a Hurtigruten Norwegian coastal voyage. With 34 ports of call, you'll get to experience quaint fishing villages, larger cities, and pretty much everything in between. Nature is the main attraction on these cruises, and there are daily departures from Birken sailing north and Kirkenes sailing south. Or you can actually just take a portion of the journey, say from Trondheim up to Kirkenes. We also do offer Scandinavian cruises, such as the Baltic Sea and, of course, the Norwegian Coastal Voyage. So now that you've decided that you want to travel to Scandinavia and you're interested in a tour, you'll travel with like-minded individuals that appreciate learning from friendly and knowledgeable tour directors. You'll get to explore areas of Scandinavia not found. Um, with other tour operators and experience things you can't do with a larger group. If you have two busloads of people all trying to get around the Little Mermaid in Denmark, then it's quite a fiasco. All of our escorted tours can be customized with pre and post tour packages to provide a one of a kind experience. And if you do need a completely customized package, then we have the skills, knowledge, and contacts to provide the service for you. And best of all, there's no hidden extras. What you see included on the itinerary is what you get. We don't have optional tours that you have to pay for while you're traveling around. So we do have some frequently asked questions that we do get off, you know, asked a lot. And the first of which is, who is a typical Brecky tour participant? And generally, our clients are retired and range, the ages range, um, you know, 50 and up. But we have quite a few multi-generational, you know, for participants, um, parents bringing their children or grandchildren. They come from various parts of the U.S. and Canada, and many have ethnic ties to Scandinavia. Our clients enjoy the cultural and educational opportunities we provide and are looking forward to the soft adventures, which can be enjoyed by all ages. They enjoy the companionship of meeting fellow travelers, and they enjoy all the little things that we include in our tours, such as airfare, the ability to customize your tour, luggage handling, and unplanned stops at out-of-the-way places. And one of the nice things is you won't be traveling from 6 a.m. until 10 o'clock at night. So, and I think most of all, our clients trust us to provide a quality tour at a fair price. And so the next question is, uh, what is the currency for Scandinavia? 
An answer for this really just varies um, as each country has its own. If you do travel to more than one country, you will need to exchange money as you cross the border. And the best rates of exchange can be found at the banks, but you can also exchange money at airports and other terminals. Credit cards are widely accepted in Scandinavia, but you'll want to notify your credit card company before you travel outside the US. Another frequently asked question is what to pack. So I always recommend clients to bring clothing that you can wear. Uh, casual clothing is perfectly fine for our tours and you'll want to bring good walking shoes. You'll also want to bring a jacket and maybe a raincoat. Um, other things you might want to pack include an umbrella or poncho, snacks, medication, um, sunscreen, and maybe a small day pack where you can put your sweater and coat and water bottle and things like that. And for those of you that are traveling um, on our tours, do you have to change planes? And the answer is yes. All of our escorted tours include flights on Iceland Air from Minneapolis. You will need to change planes when you get to Reykjavik, but really the airport there is very easy to navigate and you only need about 30 to 45 minutes for your layover, which makes the connection really quick and easy. And finally, when is a good time to travel to Scandinavia? And the short answer is really anytime. It depends on you. Um, if you prefer smaller crowds, are traveling on a budget, then perhaps the spring or fall would be best. Um, if you enjoy winter activities or want to see the northern lights, then winter is obvious, uh, the obvious choice. And if you plan on traveling with a group and want to experience Scandinavia at its warmest, then traveling during June through August would be your best bet. Another question um, or worry that we get is, um, you know, what what is there to eat in Norway? Do I have to have a special diet? Well, if if you're worried about going hungry, then let, let that worry subside because there's, there's not an issue there. Each morning you'll be greeted with a hearty breakfast buffet. There won't be just uh, frozen waffles and maybe a bagel or muffin or something like that. You get a whole table of food to choose from. There's cereal, yogurt, baked good, hot dishes and more. So if you leave the breakfast room hungry, it's, it's because you probably overslept. So we do include dinners at most of the hotels, and so they also have a buffet. And some of the meats that you can expect to see, of course, fish, um, reindeer, and lamb. So if you're wanting a hamburger, I'm sorry, you're probably going to be out of luck. And of course, we do make plenty of stops um, during the day for snacks and coffee or tea, and sometimes even some ice cream. And again, thank you all for sending in your questions. So I did go ahead and put those in the, um, the ones that I saw into the, I, the, pro, the presentation here. And so where will I meet my tour guide? Uh, your tour guide will actually meet you at the arriving airport outside of customs. So say your tour begins in Oslo, your tour guide will meet you at the Gardermoen airport once you collect your luggage and pass through the customs area. If you're traveling on other flights outside of the group, then the tour guide will meet you at the hotel. And do we ever depart from the itineraries for family heritage sites? And we actually do this more often than what you would think. We love to try and include family heritage sites on our tours when it's feasible, and that's the key. If time allows, then we're more than willing to fit a quick visit in. Um, if you need more time or if it's way out of the way, then we would try to work with you to make individual arrangements. We've had plenty of people that will leave the tour maybe for the day and then join the tour later that afternoon or even the next morning. So uh, it's really just all, it just all depends and we can customize you know, that directly for you. How soon will tours be ready for 2016? And typically we try to have tours ready for the next year in the fall. Um, if you're already planning for 2016, please give us a, a call or send us an email. We'll make sure that you are on our list uh, and let you know just as soon as your tour becomes available and ready to book. How can I get advice? Um, well, the easiest thing is to call us. Let us know your questions and we will try to answer them to the best of our ability. We love talking to our clients about their travel plans. And even if you don't know exactly what you want yet, just talking to someone that knows um, the area and has the knowledge and experience to help you can help really get the ball rolling. Can I use my newly learned Norwegian? So I've learned some Norwegian, will I get to use it? Well, yes and no. Most Norwegians really do speak wonderful English and your, your tour guide will actually speak both. Uh, you may also find that many of the workers that you'll come into contact with um, in the tourist industry in Norway are actually Swedish. 
So you'll find that speaking a few words of Norwegian will help if you're exploring on your own. Even if your accent, um, forgive me, I have a terrible Texas accent and there's no way to get rid of it. So my accent is not even close to being dead on, but I, if you make the effort, people will appreciate that and you'll be amazed at how friendly um, Norwegians can be. What additional costs um, will there be? Well, we typically include all of your breakfast and um, most dinners during your trip. Lunches, however, are usually left up to you. You can expect to spend about five to fifteen dollars for lunch in Norway. However, a lot of people they eat a large breakfast and then they'll just eat a snack or something for lunch and then eat a, a large dinner, and you'll find that really you don't need that many lunches. Um, other expenses are usually of a personal nature: um, laundry, drinks at dinner, if you want any taxis or uh, the biggest thing is probably the gratuity for your driver and the guides. So um, I always recommend to my clients to bring a bag full of snacks and you can use that to kind of stave off any hunger pains that you might feel during the day. And then at the end of the trip, you can use that bag to take your souvenirs home. So another money saving tip, bring an empty water bottle with you to Norway and fill it up in the morning before you leave. The water in Norway and Scandinavia is really good, so you can just fill it up at the tap and you save yourself two or three dollars. So, and now what everybody I'm sure has just been waiting for, um, we do have a little promotion discount for those of you that joined us today or that registered. Um, we would like to offer you $100 per person savings on some of the following tours. We have springtime in Norway, Taste of Norway and Sweden, Best of Norway, Tour A, Norway's Fabulous Fjords, and Splendor of Norway. So to take advantage of this offer, all you have to do is just register by April 10th, so which is next Friday, so you have uh, a little over a week. And um, just send us your registration with the SCAN15 promo in the uh, promo code field. Send us a check for your payment and we'll deduct $100 per person off the price of your tour. And please note that this uh, discount only applies to the tours that you see. It's, and you can't combine it with other offers, I'm sorry. And it only applies to new bookings. So if you do have a family of four or more, give us a call and we'll see about maybe offering you a special discount. So how do you get started? Well, you can request our 2015 brochure either online by email or phone. And you can also visit us online where you can sign up and register for a tour. In addition, on our website, you can payment, sign up for our e-newsletter, uh, find helpful hints on traveling to Scandinavia and more. So just a little quote, 20 years from now, you'd be more you will be more disappointed in, by the things you didn't do than by the things you did. So just a little reminder that um, you need, everybody has to seize the day, travel when you can, don't put it off until you think you can or that you have free time and whatnot. So, so here's our contact information once again. And we, I'm sorry I went over a little bit, but if you guys do have any questions, please feel free to uh, type those out to me and um, there's a little chat box down in the bottom left hand corner. I'll be glad to answer any questions that you may have. So far there's no questions. I talked for way too long and I'm sorry, but uh, if there's questions that you think of later that maybe I didn't um, cover today or if you just want more information, please give us a call. We, we are here to talk to you. We love talking to you. And, um, or, you know, if you aren't, don't have a phone handy, send us an email when you can, and we'll be glad to talk to you about any of our tours or traveling. Um, you know, if you prefer to travel independently, we're, we're more than happy to help you with that as well. So if we don't have any questions, and I don't see any questions coming in, I guess we will go ahead and wrap things up. And again, I thank everybody for joining us today. I'll flip back to the little screen here in case you want to jot down that. Oh, aha, questions came in. Um, Janice, I will, I will follow up with you on that. Um, thank you for the question. I will check on that for you. And um, thank you guys so much for the comments. I appreciate that. 
if you, like I said, if you do have any other questions that I didn't cover today, please feel free to email us, call us, however, however you want to get in touch with us, we are here. So I hope everybody has a wonderful and happy Easter. Um, have fun hunting those eggs, and we will hopefully see you in Scandinavia this summer. Thank you so much.